Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Tonight, I'd like to talk a little bit about space and how we can fit that into your practice, your Tai Chi, your Qigong, and your life. And um, so just having a concept of the idea opens doors to being able to introduce it as a valuable component in your, in your practice. And um, first of all, just get a, a general idea. What is commonly understood as space is the relationship between this and that. It's um, saying that this and that are separate things and therefore there's some distance between them, whatever that distance may be. And the this could be the observer. He could be the this and the that will be the object being observed. So what it does is it establishes relationship. And depending on what framework you're putting that in, you're going to get different ways of looking at space. And uh, there's a whole bunch of valid ones out there and you get to pick and choose depending on the context in which it, the, the question arises. But let's talk about it in terms of your practice because that's uh, kind of relevant to what we're doing here. And um, so the, we're talking about relationship to something or between things. You know, we establish that, that context there. It, um, the space is an idea that arises with the idea that something is stuff, something is matter or something is, is has some density. And so the language that I'm comfortable with is calling the, between insubstantial and substantial. If the, the substantiality means how much fixity or density or um, I guess fixity and density probably and location. It's a, a location would be fixity also. So the where there's an object holds a position and from that we can orient to other things. And uh, so we, you know, if I say, I put my hand out there and I say, okay, or let's say a fist, okay? I got, I got a fist out there. It's, I have it in a position and that position is constantly changing if, if by, you know, millimeters, but there's a, a relative relationship of that fist to my body. So I say, okay, I'm observing the fist. And so there is space between, between my torso and my fist. I'm saying, okay, there's two different, two different things here. And, but if I consider that it's all part of one system, that space dissolves, or at least becomes, it changes, the relationship changes. If I have two fists out, we can see space between the two and which disappears whenever the hands disappear or if I per turn my attention to something else. That if I go back and say, oh yeah, but that space was already, already there and it is, but it's a different, um, a different relationship then. It's, it's one that I, I'm thinking about it conceptually. So the, the key element that I want to bring out here is two primary relationships to space. One is as an it, that is something that I can objectify, think about, talk about, create a system, create a, uh, a bunch of ideas, string them together and say, okay, we have a predictable relationship based on these ideas. And the idea can simply be that I, oh, it takes me some time to go to the kitchen from here. So therefore there's some space between where I am sitting now and the kitchen. So I say, okay, there's some space there. So I have an idea of what that is, my relationship to the kitchen. So the one that we're most familiar with is space as an object. That is space is something we think about. 
and be it a big space or a small space or you know, a long distance or a short distance, whatever. It, there is, we, it's an idea and it's colored by our language, which determines our particular relationship to that. Oh, this apartment feels cramped to me. There's no space in it. Oh, I'm going out in the desert and wow, there's space everywhere. That's, that's, uh, that's amazing. Or hey, there's too much space here. I want I want to feel something a little a little less. So we we are defining our relationship to it and creating ideas and emotions around that too. So the other side, the non-objective part, is when I'm inside. And when you're inside the space, the space doesn't disappear, but the objectification disappears the thought disappears when you're inside the space so you have to create a, a a distance mental distance a psychic distance between yourself and the object being perceived that is in this case space and since space is really really insubstantial then we have this it's real easy to kind of create it as a vast abstraction and make it into more non-stuff than stuff. But there are different ideas about space that are useful, even if they are part of a particular mythology, let's say the quantum science mythology. And they say, you know, there's a an idea that is there that space is a medium that is super dense and super fluid. That is, rather than it being totally empty, that it is actually stuff. It is super dense. That is, you can think of it as like the, um, like water in, in the ocean. And you say, okay, the fish are in there and they're, they're swimming around and they're not really thinking much about the density of the, of the medium in which they are swimming around. They just doing their thing. The space has disappeared as an it for them and they are just in that medium and they do what they do. And, you know, they wriggle a certain way or flap their wings or whatever, and they, uh, they're, they're fins and they, they're able to propel themselves through this and it's just part of what they are. They're not thinking about it as a separate thing. We humans, we like to think about stuff. So we, we then can objectify the medium and make it into something other, something that we can think about, something we can make into a system and, and we can then maybe find a more efficient way to, to um, move through this medium. So the idea of it being super dense and super fluid is kind of cool because super fluid means that you're moving through it and there's no resistance. You can move through it. Oh, okay. You're able to move through this medium, even if it were super dense. It doesn't matter because you're not feeling you're so used to that medium that you're not feeling any resistance from it. But as we talk about in Taiji Trend, we, we're moving very slowly and you wanna feel like you're swimming through the air. So we ah, you're feeling that when you slow it down and really attune to the insubstantial, you start to feel the resistance of the space. And it requires an awareness that goes beyond the eye of flesh and the eye of mind. It goes, you requires you having, opening up the eye of spirit, that moving into a super conscious state to be able to, to get to that. And that means that you're able to move be, beyond the rational mind and perceive with faculties that are hidden a lot of the time, faculties that we have to learn to develop. 
and we and we do through our practice and we do that primarily by learning how to access the first of all we access the sensory neural network so we can actually feel this stuff and we become more and more attuned to the insubstantial and then we start to tune into okay there is some density perhaps to this i don't know it's a story a myth that i like because it helps me to do certain things another myth that comes out of the mythology of quantum physics is that every cubic centimeter of empty space quote empty space is has enough energy um Feynman um Richard Feynman he he said that oh yeah it's it's there's every cubic centimeter there's enough energy within that cubic centimeter of empty space to boil all the world's oceans uh, another um, David Bohm said that there's more energy in a cubic centimeter than is in exists in all the mass in the entire universe. I don't know if that's true or not. It's a cool story and I like it because it kind of gives an idea that, hey, maybe and this is something that's inspired a lot of my work, you know, since going back into, you know, like quarter of a century is is that what if I could tap into a little piece of that energy? And tying these two myths together, what if, if that super dense, super fluid medium that I'm working through is enables me to access some of the latent energy, that potential energy that exists within that empty space, then it's not so empty anymore. That space is very robust. And now that space becomes my partner. So when I'm inside, I'm in an IU, not an I it, but an IU relation. I am meeting the space. And that get that gets kind of cool. And then in that relationship that gets created there, that IU relationship with, with that then allows you to open doors of potentiality that may not exist if you think about it exclusively as an it, as something other, something that I can think about and you know, reduce it to an algorithm, reduce it to some sort of analytical concept. But then you get into that and you actually start to feel the, 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 the space and cool stuff happens. We've done an exercise at um, Taiji Alchemy where there's a, and, and and in our Staten Island class too, where you locate a point, just any kind of point, arbitrarily pick a point, you locate that and touch it and meet that point. And then we have people pushing on, on your body and they are able to hold off several people with, with very little effort because they are plugged into that location. They are meeting that location. Somehow that amplifies the field. I just have stories about why I think that might be possible, but the observable is the fact that yes, it, it works. So, okay, how do we explain that? And this is my way of, of talking about it. So the, whenever we, want to do something, we need to create the space to do it in, whatever that thing may be. If you, if you don't, then you're an object that's kind of stumbling into other objects and you are pretty much limited by the forces that are accumulated and you are deter your, your, your movement, your, your power, whatever is, is determined for you. If you want to flip that around and say, Hey, I kind of like to run, drive the bus now myself. Then one of the components and doing that is creating space. And that is you extend from a position, you occupy a position and you extend from that. 
And to the extent that you can extend from that, you are creating space. And this conversation came up whenever Maria and I were talking about the empty step. And what makes the empty step work is the fact that you are actually creating space with your foot. So you're reaching out with your foot and you're creating a, a safe space for your body to be. And if you just kind of lurch along, you know, someone described walking as sort of falling forward, stumble, you know, that's, that's, and, and for a lot of people that, that is the case. But as a Tai Chi player, you say, mm, is there, maybe there's a better way. And then we, we have the empty step. That is, we reach out with the foot, we create a space. Then we fill that space. In the past few weeks, and going back for a long time, I, I talked about ball ni qua, establishing your position, locating the floor, the earth with your the ball of your foot, setting the knee, and then releasing into the qua. And that's the same idea here. We're creating space with that. We're creating space, and what do we? Oh, now that we have a space, we can fill that up with something. We can fill it up with a structure and create a safe space. And, and the space is now safe for me to load it up and make that my substantial leg. So it's, it may just seem like another thing that Rick wants us to, to do, to add to the numerous other things, but it actually, I think, is, is a very helpful thing because, you know, in very practical terms, I would use that in playing in, say, push hands tournaments. If I wanted to change the dynamic, if I would consider my partner not as this big, strong guy, but as a lot of empty space and, and I'm able to have a relationship with that space, then I'm able to I have a different way of moving when I when I think that. If I'm thinking like I'm I'm running into something that's really immovable, then I'm thinking about that as an object, that person as an object that is, you know, I'm encountering. If there's I'm meeting the space there, then things change. Similar to holding that point in the and and your way you your body responds by getting more plugged in, more connected, more energized. So it has a very practical thing and it changes your relationship to everything in your world. You take a walk down the street, it's not like, okay, I'm just going to just go through and uh, get into a rhythm and kind of zone out and plug into my headphones and just kind of forget about everything. It's like, no, no, every step is unique. Every step is a new relationship with your environment. And you're meeting, 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 meeting. And each time you do that, you have the option of going into a super conscious state, which then nourishes all kinds of mental and physical expansion, growth, and, uh, and put you in a happy place. Uh, any questions or thoughts on this before we move forward? Richard. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking about your, um, the visualization of you playing push hands and thinking of the other person as being mostly empty rather than mostly dense. Um, and that, it seems to me that that makes the person uh, weigh almost nothing. So they're easy to move around. Is there a sense like that? It, it is a sense like that, yes. It is very yeah. much a sense like that. So, and to the extent that you're doing it and they're not, you, <laughs> you have a, a distinct advantage in that case. If they say, oh yeah, I see you and raise you, 
then you got a game. You know, you got you you know you're playing with somebody who is oh, I've got you know I'm playing with a Jedi now. Great, okay, I can learn something because you know they just took it up to another level, and then but, then push hands becomes a, a learning an opportunity. Then yes. So did did you experience that with other players? Sure. Were there a few other players who were at that point? Oh, of course, yes. There, there, uh, okay. There's, there's, there's lots of, you know, and there's lots of other strategies too that make it make it interesting. But the it's something that, you know, we played with at Taiji Alchemy, and we, you know, in in, in our our class here in Staten Island, we played with those kind of things at all. Where it's like, you know, the the frequent thing is, yeah, but I didn't do anything. And what is meant there is, I'm not using the same force that I am expecting to use. It's not that I didn't do anything. It's just that I, I'm not using a lot of muscular force to make this happen. So it, uh, so that you, your perception is that the other person has become very light, and you, you find it quite, quite easy. You get that sense of effortless power when that happens. Scott, you had something. Yeah, I just wanted to say, yeah, it's interesting when I'm thinking about, you know, like when I'm doing my form or doing Qigong or when I'm creating, you know, like if I'm creating a piece of art or something else. But think about that. Think about what it feels when I'm doing that. You're right. It's creating a different space. And I think that's really, really interesting. Right? Yeah. And the key here is to remember that you are in charge. You get to create the space. It's not something that happens to you serendipitously. You know, you, by changing your mind, your way of looking, you create a different kind of space. You know, just as you can change the emotional quality of this of the space by entering with a cheerful disposition as opposed to an angry disposition. The energy of the space changes and the space itself changes. One's, one's perception of that, one's relationship to that. If we consider that space is not a fixed thing, but a statement of relationships, even if we're looking at it as like all the space in the universe, it's still a relationship. It's a it's my thought form about what I would imagine all the space in the universe to be. That's still a relationship. That's still a relationship of this guy thinking certain thoughts and creating that. And, and we have, we're still creating relationship there. Cool. Anybody else? Keith. 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 Hey, brother, from another mother, that's what the raised hand is for. Uh, lower hand. There we go. Hey, you know what? It's not as much of a statement as an observation that, you know, I, you know, I, I'm sure as, as an infant, I probably saw this guy somewhere before he tooled off. But I first met him 13, 14 years ago at on his mother's front porch, his parents' front porch. And first time I ever saw him and I'm not I don't want to make him any more of a wizard or a magi than any of you guys ever already think he is but if you haven't like been in front of him to deal with one of his pushing fucking demonstrations blew my mind uh you know and as a teenager I had a sister that had a actually a black belt boyfriend Shotokan karate I learned the physical physics of the technique of from the wrist to the shoulder to the hip to the floor you know, I learned all, you know, all that shit, but it's such a different thing that with less effort versus more effort, because Shotokan Karate, it's all about the force of your entire body blasting through something, and Tai Chi seems to be kind of just the opposite, you know, and this pushing thing just blew my mind. I said, I was 47 years old. I met him on the front porch. He had me try to push him, did not fucking move. 
Uh, he showed me how to okay, get I was going hands. somewhere with this, Keith. <laughs> oh, what I meant is it's worth the price of admission. And I know everyone already knows this. So I'm sorry, Richard. Don't mean to take up airtime. You got a lot of stuff to talk about. <laughs> That's me. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Didn't mean to cut you off there, but you're right. We do want we do we do want to move on here. Anybody else have any thoughts before we go on? Okay, so uh, let's uh, let's um, create some space and. Uh, Let's just start just by just bring your hands out. And bring your awareness to the feeling in your hands. And if you need to, you can wiggle your fingers or something like that. Just kind of get the get get a, a, a connection through your nervous system of what that feeling is of those hands. Now, imagine that you're pushing the hands together. Don't move them, but get the feeling of doing that. Activate the, the preparation for doing that, but don't actually let the muscles Go ahead and push and just feel the relationship between the hands now. Now bring your awareness to the space between the hands. And just notice what happens to your mind when you do that. Now bring it back to the substantiality of the hands. Now bring it back to the insubstantiality that lies between them. Okay. And just notice what that does to you, to your mind, to your energy, to your field, to your presence, whenever you make those distinctions. So when we meet, we encounter, and meeting has both a substantial and an insubstantial quality to it, an objective and a non-objective quality to it. So the in the IU part, where you actually are encountering, not as an object, but as a partner, we enter into a, a really insubstantial field. Whenever we think about the stuff, we put it into context, we start to use our thoughts to organize the experience, to describe the experience and make a story out of it, then we move into the substantiality. So we're going to do a very simple meditation and then do some empty stepping and, uh, and start to play a little bit with the feeling of, of, the, of the space. So stand up, please. Yeah, so uh, feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee spiral down to the left, loading up the right leg, pick up the left heel and step out. To the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, spiral down to the right, loading up the left leg and then turn. Now feel the balls of both feet. And feel through the balls of both feet. Feel the floor under your feet. The ball is the focal point, but 
then allow your awareness to fill up the whole foot. Extend through that into the space below, reaching down through your foot and creating space below the foot. And, and imagine, not even imagine, but feel yourself filling up a physical space that is equal to the physical space above the floor. Your body's physical space. Imagine you have a root system that is equal to the space under you. Allow yourself to relax into that and know that you are supported by this root structure. Now reach for the crown of your head. And the chin, lengthen the spine, open the jade pillow gate, and extend upward. Reaching up and extending, creating space above you. to say for symmetry's sake, we'll create a space as big as your physical structure above you. Continue to feel that and continue to feel the space below you. Relax your lower back. Allow your sacrum to drop, your coccyx. Allow your Wei Lu to reach down. And feel the space being created between your Ni Wan at the crown of your head and the coccyx, your Lu, and feel the space being created in your spine between the vertebrae. Feel your vertebrae lengthening, opening. Reversing the compression that gravity has visited upon you for these many decades. And feeling that space that's getting created there in your, in, in your spine. Point and reach with your index fingers. And feel the space that's being created in your connective tissue system as you elongate that and create a create tensegrity in your connective tissue system. And feel the increased flow of energy as you do that. Feel the sensations in your hands as you create more space in your body. Reach with your elbows, create space in your shoulder joints. And 
and spiral down to the left and turn to the right and back again and release tension in your quad, in your hip joints. You create space, internal space there, allowing the muscular tension to dissolve. Continue to feel the space below your feet. Allow your awareness to occupy that space. Continue to feel the space above you and occupy that. And feel the space inside your body. meeting each of these and when we're meeting it we are able to access the inside as well as the outside we're able to see the the context of the space but we are not limited by just the rational thought process we actually are moving into a feeling as well as thinking. Bow forward slightly from the hip joint, keeping the spine straight, and just feel the yin as you sink. And then Straighten up, and as you do that, reach up with your wrists. Relax your fingers. Feel yourself moving through this viscous fluid. Reach out with your fingers. Open the space between your shoulder blades. Reach forward with your fingers. Bow forward slightly. Reach down with your elbows, your wrists. And feel yourself very slowly moving through that space and feel the viscosity of the space. Like you're swimming through the air. Straighten up and reach down, open. And bow forward. Rotate your forearms so the palms face upward. Straighten up and feel yourself carrying. Feel the density of the space as it pushes down on your hands and on your forearms. And reach out, open, feel the open between the shoulder blades, reach with your elbows, open the shoulders. Rotate the forearms. Bow forward from the quad, reach down at the elbows. Moving through the space, feel the viscosity. Feel your arms floating on that viscosity.
feel the energy that gets generated by this movement, by encountering space in this way. Now feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left. Loading up the right leg, and then turn the waist, turn to the right. Pick up the left heel. And sink into the, the right leg. Feel the support of that. Pick up the left foot and place it forward. Without only the slightest kiss on the ground. Sink into that right claw again, spiral down to the right, pick up the left foot and step back. And just feel that and step forward and just feel yourself creating the space to step into with your foot. Feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, spiral down to the right, loading up the left claw. So it becomes more and more substantial. The right leg becomes more insubstantial. Pick up the left foot or the right foot, sinking more into the into the left leg. Feel your central equilibrium. Step forward with your right foot. Put the foot down. Empty step. You want to really just feel into that and step back. Right down to the left, pick up the right heel, load up that left claw, that left leg, empty out the right leg so you can step forward. You place the foot down very gently. You're creating space with this. Feel your, your foot. Reach down through your foot and create space beneath the foot. Feel the right ball, push your right knee forward, set that. Spiral down to the right, sinking into that right claw. Feel the substantiality of this posture. Feel the left, ball the left foot, set the left knee, spiral down to the left. You're loading that up. Really sinking into that. Pick up the right heel and step back with your right foot. forward and step back again. Each time we do that, step forward, we're creating space in front of us. Now we're bringing awareness to the space behind us. We're creating that. We're creating that empty step creates that safe space to, to make that, ah, oh, this is a good landing spot. I can build on this, ball, knee, Spiral down to the left this time, claw, and step back. Parallel and pivot. And feel the substantiality of that posture. Bring your awareness to the space below you the space above you. The space inside you.
We'll just be with that for a moment. Inside the space. You've created the a safe space, the substantiality of the space. Now you climb inside and you explore the insubstantiality. Feel the ball of the right foot. Set the right knee and spiral down to the left, loading up the right leg. Step in with the left foot. Take a deep breath. Exhale and disappear the chi. Dissolve into the insubstantiality. Take a seat, please. How are we doing? Good. Am I taller? Are my arms longer? <laughs> Feel taller. <laughs> Feel taller. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> well, you know, every week it's just more and more um, energy experience. Wow. Good. About what words I can make at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> wow is a good word. Richard. Um, right in the beginning, Thinking of the space between my hands uh, made it much more dense, and I actually had to hold my hands in place to keep them from growing. <laughs> it was really, it, really interesting. Uh, yeah, it, it, you know, when you actually meet the space right. as a partner, then it's like it becomes a thing. It becomes like you know an, an event that. Oh, I have to pay attention to that. <laughs> that's 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 an important player in this in the whole in the whole game. Exactly. <laughs> that space, you got you got problems, you know. So uh, uh, it it creates all kinds of opportunities. Valerie, you had something. Um, yeah, I don't have to think of it again. Um, <laughs> there was a point, and I I didn't want to start dwelling on it because I wanted to be in the experience, but I wanted to remember it so that I could verbalize. It. Um, there was definitely points, well, a big point in time of where there was no inside outside. Okay, it was just all part of the same thing. Um, didn't, you know, it's like, what was substantial? What was insubstantial? I couldn't tell you, you know, <laughs> because it was all, it was all the same. Right. Um, um, and so, you know, ob well, maybe not obviously, but I did obviously, you know, really thoroughly enjoy being in that, that space. I did notice that while standing, um, and I think it's just due to, um, uh, well, it's your feet, you know, my lower part of my body feeling heavier than, you know, and so therefore more substantial than the upper part. But I experienced that way up there as well as I experienced it way down there. But I just, and again, I couldn't think about it too much. I didn't want to 
start extrapolating because I was going to take myself out of it. Just feeling the the more substantiality of my legs, but that makes sense because it's your legs, it's what's holding you up. But again, there was still that feeling of no difference between the inside and the outside, um, which was pretty great. Wonderful. That's it. Thank you. Great. Sharon. Uh, for a physical manifestation, I think it's the first time I've ever been able to relax my qua. Wow. Yeah. That's huge. It is. It is. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's, that's intense. Yeah. Yeah. And I really um, so appreciated the slight folding forward um, and, and connecting with the yin. That was an important piece for me also. And then um, I was very challenged myself in connecting above myself. Um, and I, if you have any tips for me on how to work on that, I'd appreciate it. Because I feel mm. like I, I, almost, I almost failed on that one. I got something. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, you know, it's one of those things you got to do it a few times, you know, if you can reach with the crown of your head and feel the crown of your head, and you can even start by just placing your hand there and, you know, pushing up against it, you know, and just so you get that sense of it, like, oh, okay. And then, and then you go up to meet your hand and with the crown of your head and like, you know, you start to create, you've got space now, yeah. right? There's an awareness above you. And then you go up even higher and then you say, okay, I'm going to go up, I'm going to bounce against the ceiling. You know, I'll take it up to the ceiling. And just by doing that, you are creating space. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Keith. <laughs> uh, someone else, Scott. Yeah, Richard made, reminded me. <clears throat> yeah, when we, as soon as we, I mean, as soon as we felt our hands, you know, I felt my hands and arms filling up. But as soon as I focused on the space in between, it was that immediate whole body coherence that, you know. Nice. You, know, you couldn't, five people couldn't knock me over. And it was just immediate. It was really, really cool. Beautiful. Beautiful. Good. Stan. Unmute Stan. <laughs> there it is. Uh, it's sometimes very difficult. No, as you say, really a basic question. Uh, when you are uh, raising the head up a little bit and creating space up there, are you also maintaining the space underneath the feet? Yes. Uh, that's why I wanted to so. just check on that. That's something basic, but I thought I'd better ask. No, no, thank no, you. It's good. Thank you for asking that question because it's it it needs to be emphasized that we are mm -hmm. you're you know up and down both you know <laughs> you're, the you know the yang impulse up and the yin impulse down and keep those two and with you as the as the kind of like a bar magnet between them. Ah. You know, you have this, you know, north and south pole of the magnet, the positive and negative, and then you create, just by creating those poles in opposition, you are creating flow, energy flow. So yeah. today we were focusing on space, but matter, energy, space, and time all arise together. That they, as soon as we say this is not that, we have all four of those, and all four of those are just stories that we tell ourselves anyway but they are you know they're useful stories so we're we're happy to keep them around and uh, so but it's all part of one big mush that we as humans get to say okay but this piece of mush is different than that piece of mush so <laughs> we're, gonna, we're, we're gonna say that between them we have we have these different components and these are just names for relationships 
You hmm. say this stuff here is denser than this stuff over here. We'll call that matter, but it's all part of the same mush. So uh, the uh, and creating those distinctions enables us to create relationships and and energy as a an expression of those relationships. Valerie. Um, something that I noticed, you know, I'm always going back to the way Lou, um, and I found it extremely, uh, because maybe I was occupying my own space so much more thoroughly that, you know, noticing, uh, okay, way Lou popped out of place a little bit, you know, drop that, and, you know, lifting of the knee one, those just became more prominent, easier to identify. Um, like I said, I think that's just because I was occupying my own space more thoroughly during that exercise, um, which I hope bleeds into other moments. I'm still feeling very um, spacious, but substantial. <laughs> I'm still got that insubstantial, substantial going on. You know, it's like, which is which? don't know, don't care. Beautiful. Seeds have been planted. Each time we go there, seeds are planted, and that creates a uh, a strange attractor that pulls that pulls us into a new way of being. You know, it's it starts off as as something other, and then it gets stronger and stronger until it becomes oh that's that's where I'm going next, and so that it pulls us so. Each of those seeds kind of like takes us into the potentiality of something greater. Jonathan. So, I mean, I think the space thing opens up all kinds of a, of a playground to really explore. I really like this. Um, I'm sort of interested. I've always been fascinated by this dichotomy. The Niwan reaching is a kind of a yang extension up. And at the same time, the, from the Dantian, we're releasing. They're really two different things, right? That's the kind of the yin. The bottom part's the yin, the top part's the yang. Uh, and yet they're both, now you're having us both kind of extend into space. I mean, without thinking of the space below the feet and all of that, now deep it goes, it would be more like, well, you're just receiving, you know, you're uh, releasing into the solid ground that you're standing on. At the same time, you're kind of reaching up into the heavens in the yang of your head. But, um, I'm just wondering how you, it's like with this space above and below equally, I don't know, it's like extension into both. I'm just wondering how that plays out with you with this sort of extending of the yang and the releasing of the yin and if it modifies it, if it enhances it, or if it does anything for you. Well, both of those are ways of thinking about that type of uh, relationship and they just define them in different terms. And it's a question of what you're going for. So the idea of releasing down, that's, that's, that's great. And, and it's, a, it's an important step in this. What we're talking about here, I think, is kind of going into the master class of, uh, of this. We're going beyond just releasing this stuff into more stuff, this piece of substantiality and allowing it to sink into a, an even denser piece of substantiality. We're saying, oh no, we're extending into the insubstantiality of the earth and we are occupying the space part of that. So it's acknowledging that, that every substantiality has its own insubstantiality. Every substantiality or insubstantiality has its own substantiality. And so we, we, we get those, that, those relationships and saying, okay, where am I going to put my focus now? If my focus is on the space, then I'm not thinking about the mass of the earth or the matter. I'm thinking about the creating the gaps between and that which the matter occupies. But here again, we're also, we're delineating a particular piece of that because you can do this exercise and, and extend it infinitely, but you have to decide is what is that useful for? What am I doing if I extend infinitely? 
And sometimes you do want to do that with, you want to create an infinite space. You know, there's your, you can imagine reaching out and, and keep your energy extending out infinitely. And that's, that's a perfectly valid exercise. This exercise created a, a platform of substantiality and the insubstantiality within that. And so there's a kind of um, enclosing each other. And so it creates a, uh, a different kind of experience, I think, than just say the idea like, you know, the idea of Sung being, you know, you take a sack of rice and you cut the, cut the bottom and the rice spills out, or you think of a, uh, an hourglass and the sand drops down and, and fills up. And those are perfectly great images too. This takes it, I think, a, a step deeper into insubstantiality. And it has, it's, it's a worthwhile experiment, a worthwhile exploration. It takes you into a different place. And like I said before, it plants seeds that says, okay, so what happens if I'm in space and you know there's there is no planet Earth to to occupy. What then? So we can we can imagine other possibilities at that point. Are they useful or not? I found them useful to think of it in these ways, because I can, when I'm playing push hand, say, I can just by hollowing out the space underneath my partner's <laughs> body, and they. You know, they look puzzled because the root's gone. You know? <laughs> but that's just a, it's just, you know, a thought form of mine that creates something different energetically that has an effect on the system that we both occupy. But, so then you get to, you get to play with other stuff. Well, I, I, you definitely get to play. I mean, I'm thinking of an astronaut in a gravity free zone. What's the yin and yang of his head and his, you know, in his right. feet. I mean, it's you got to pick and, one, and, right? And the idea here, I mean, the yin now of releasing, you know, just the sack of coins or whatever that's dropping. You, it's like almost has this yang element now with the space of you're extending, which right. is less a you know, it's more yang kind of idea. But if you right. can yang your yin, can you also yin your yang? And totally. I mean, can you be received up in into heavens, not just Absolutely. reaching? Yeah, that's kind of that's all okay, kinds of possibilities. Very, we got to wrap this up, but one more, one more comment here, and we'll we'll, we'll call it a day. Richard, uh, I was just saying that I I found that I'm freeing my I have to release myself of the yin and yang issues because I think I under I what I think Jonathan the way that I think of what Jonathan is saying is that it's a little puzzling to be reaching in opposite directions because those are both yang movements. So reaching into the earth, if you want that to be yin, then you're releasing into the earth. If you want it to be yang, you're reaching. Into so I, I, I find that, you know, talking about substantial and insubstantial and filling the space, uh, I, I get myself all twisted up if I try to figure out which is yang, yang and which is yin. Yeah. Then it, it, it comes back to pick one. You know, you, yes. you, you decide, you get, you get, you get to, to, and, and that's what creates a lot of real interesting possibilities in our practice is, and that's when weird stuff happens is whenever you can start doing that, whenever you can start mm. monkeying around with space and, and you start creating effects that are seemingly inexplicable that make you seem like a wizard sometimes. <laughs> the uh, the uh, that was for you, Keith. Anyway, <laughs> hey, dude. All I want to say, and I don't want to interrupt the conversation because I don't even have an intelligent question to ask. <laughs> I just want to let you know that that was really cool. I've been through some visual, uh, what a literary stimulation where I was rebirthed in my in the twenties with my <laughs> wife and stuff. But I got to tell you, you know, I felt it. And that's all along the process. I've only been doing this for a couple of months. You turned me <laughs> on to Valerie, who's a great, great teacher. Okay, we're, we're signing off. Bye. Now. I'm, getting a, I'm getting the... the... <laughs> Thank you, everyone.
I'm getting, okay. getting the call from the producer that we have run over. So love you all. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night. Good night, Good night Maria. <laughs>